This is by far the biggest project that Jess and I have ever done together or even on this channel. We completely transformed this room by adding a ton of built-in bookshelves. 67 shelves to be exact and three walls and we're excited to show you how we did it in this video. Alrighty, well good morning and welcome to another video. Welcome back to the channel. It is a gorgeous fall, October morning. Absolutely love this weather. I am headed to the Home Depot to rent a truck and to buy a butt ton of plywood. Finally starting this project that has been in the works for about a couple of months now doing some built-in bookshelves. So I'm super excited to get this process started. This video may be a little bit more Justin than Jess, and that's just the nature of our work week. She works a full-time job, this is my full-time job. I'm, I'm doing this. That doesn't mean that she didn't have a hand, a massive hand in designing these bookshelves. She basically learned SketchUp and designed them herself, and I'm just showing up to build it. Well, we are back in the same room we were just in a few days ago. If you haven't watched that video, uh, we did a full weekend of painting and this was the start. So this is the room that we are putting these built-in bookshelves. This is kind of the main wall and then we're gonna put some there and there and then one up there and then that corner. With any project, there is always gonna be something that is gonna be a run-in or a complication, and this is number one. The plan all along has been to remove the cord around. We just did that. The next step is to remove the baseboard. I tried to do that, and I realized this is a really old home. The part of Nashville, it's a much older part of Nashville, so it's pretty obvious that it's an old house. With that is the understanding that a lot of these houses are just built differently. I don't think that's drywall. I'm pretty confident that's a, you know, particle board, um, I can't really tell the paint is so seeing and thick, but trying to remove the baseboard here because I need to relocate the junction box the outlet here I realized that there's not anything behind the baseboard here. There's there is But I can't tell how far back it is and so our plan was to remove this and then just paint the remainder of this wall Well, this wall ends it ends right here. It's pretty clear that the wall ends right there You can you can see that it it, it ends. So I talked to the owner and we both agreed maybe it would be a better idea to leave it and just paint it so it blends in with the wall and then what we'll do is whenever we go to put the bookshelves in we'll just notch out the vertical pieces and then make our bottom section if it sits on this baseboard what we'll do is I'll just make it more uh, narrower less less in width than the rest of them. We'll, we'll accommodate for the, the baseboard essentially. So I think for today and for the remainder of our time here at the house, I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the trim. We've got plenty of paint left over from the day and I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing going and get it to blend in with the rest of the wall. And probably have to do a couple of coats. And you know what? You guys have already seen plenty of painting, so let's just fast forward. to use a very small lead pencil like this instead of like a big framing pencil because those lines are so much thicker than something like this and I can make sure that my, my actual pencil mark is super accurate.
Y'all, I gotta say, I'm I'm pretty impressed. Having to maneuver the track and only having that, I can't really feel it. So that's, I'm honestly really impressed. That was pretty accurate. So we're, we're pretty much right at 11 inches. Yep, look at that. Bingo. Now we just gotta repeat that several times. <laughs> show you something really cool here and the importance of sanding especially a material like this you can kind of see this is just one pass with the sander and this is the section that I have not sanded yet and you can see where my pencil marks were but you can also see a, a different color here I'm using 120 grit but I wanted to show you the difference and I can even feel how much smoother this is than this side so it gives you a nice smooth finish it looks a lot better and that stain is gonna look really good on this as well. I think I've just about sanded my hands off. I'm gonna quit for the day, it's after five. I'm gonna pick up tomorrow. I got a lot done though. I got five pieces cut and sanded of the vertical pieces. So all of the, the main, the big wall, the east wall. And then I've got eight, four, so 12 uh, shelves actually uh, cut and sanded. So we made a, a lot of good progress today. And I think with everything that we've kind of run into, I'm kind of proud of how much we were able to accomplish. So uh, let's pick up tomorrow. Welcome to day number five. Yep, that's right, we skipped a few days. Day three was really just more cutting and sanding and I kinda got a little bit of a late start to the day. All I did that afternoon was just cut and sand. That's all it was. Uh, and then yesterday I did a little bit of some installation and actual assembly, um, but I forgot my SD card in the camera. So I was not able to capture any of that footage. And right now I'm currently, I feel like I don't quite have like a like an itinerary, like a step-by-step like -step what I'm doing. Some of our measurements had to be adjusted based on, on that first wall. And so we've been kind of playing around with the numbers and I've kind of been like just finding things to do along the way. So there's not really been like a plan of attack with what we're doing yet. And and that's okay. I think that's most projects anyways. You kind of just do what you can until there's an obstacle and then you figure it out and you move on to the next thing. We're currently still trying to figure out like a stain color and a finish, what we want to do there. We're not quite sure. We're still sampling out some things, taking some time with that. And I'd like to get that done before I actually install it to the wall. It'd be much easier to apply a stain, apply a finish before it's on the wall and I get stuff all over the wall. I think today my objective is to do the shelves for the middle section first. I know what those measurements are. Jess is working on the measurements for the section number two and section number four. And once all of that's done, then I can make section number five. I'm gonna do that and then I might do a little bit more sampling with the stains. I may do a little bit of edge banding. Not quite sure yet. We're kind of just taking it uh, one section, one thing at a time, just kind of going from there. I'm not Obviously we're not winging it. We've got a plan, we know what we're doing but it kind of feels like I'm winging it a little bit. And this is uh, the shed. This is all of our stock right here. I still have one, two, three, five, six, seven pieces left. Plenty of pieces here. Got a lot of the shelves cut. 
I think I may even use these for the trim. So several pieces cut and ready to go. I won't, may, not, may not have to do any more cuts today. So I have this premium wood filler and I think that's what I'm gonna use to fill the holes, my pocket holes here, instead of the actual uh, dowels that you can buy. That's gonna get expensive. Um, but I did a little bit of testing last night. I kinda wanna see how that, that turns out there. Here is, this is the middle section, this is section number three. Here's our spacer. So what I'll do is basically just set my shelf here, connect it, and then repeat the same thing, so on and so forth. And it's gonna look a lot different. The way we've got it designed is uh, number one and number five are the same. Number two and number four are the same. Number one is um, like the widest, I guess. You'll, you'll see. Okay, well, we are, we're at day six now. This is day six. So yesterday, as you can see, we finished off all of the shelves here. Everything was leveled, everything is looking good. There's a couple of sections that if there's any waste material, I already know I may replace them. It just didn't work out the way that I, I wanted it to. But everything else is, is pretty level and looks really, really good. I've already got my pieces cut for this section of the wall. I know I'm gonna install that. And then I still need to do a little bit more wood putty on a couple of spots. And then test out some stain samples, maybe some polyurethane samples. We're still not sure what we want. Oh, and then actually attach it to the wall. Gotta, it's, not, it's not attached. So as you're watching this, I've said it before, I'll say it again. This is my first time doing a project to this capacity and this uniqueness. I've done built-ins before, did the built-in fireplace. This scale, I've never done before. I already know there's several things that I would do differently if I had to do it again. There are other tools I would buy instead of the ones I did buy. Number one, these clamps, they don't help at all. They're bulky, they're heavy. I I need something that like, it, like I can do it with one hand and it's like retractable. I know Rockler sells those. I didn't buy those, I wish I had. Second thing are these clamping squares. These are really good if you have the right clamps. I don't have the right clamps, so they were really difficult to work with, and I kinda didn't even use it as much as I thought I was going to. I know Rockler sells a jig that you can actually do really good 90 square corners, but I wasn't sure how I was gonna construct this because the room is so small and because of how tall they were, and so I knew I was gonna wanna construct at least the vertical spaces first and then attach the shell. So I thought this would come in handy more than the aforementioned jig. Now, uh, you might also be wondering, what are some of the tools that I've used to actually build these bookshelves? Now, a lot of people will build these types of things in their shops or at, you know, at their homes, and then they'll bring them to the, to the site. For me, I don't have that luxury, and so I had to build everything on site, which is perfectly fine. But that means I don't have a really nice table saw that has a big outfeed table and get all my cuts super clean, super accurate. I knew this job was coming up and I decided to buy the track, the Festool uh, TS55 track saw. And that's how I've gotten pretty much all of my cuts. I did bring a portable table saw that's helped with some minor tweaking here and there, but that was a big purchase. And then I found um, a Festool uh, sander on Facebook Marketplace uh, for pretty much 
brand new for a fraction of the cost of what they sell them for, that has helped tremendously in the sanding process. Number one, because it's just a better sander than the Ryobi sander I have. It's less vibration. And then I also paired it with the Festool CT Mini. That's a really good dust extractor. It helps with cleanup in here, but it also helps with the sanding uh, dust extraction. My, I've noticed that my sandpaper, um, it lasts so much longer. So those are three of the biggest purchases that I made, and it has definitely expedited the process compared to what I came from. If you've watched some of our previous videos, you know we've been using a Ryobi little Trax hand saw and then like uh, our circular saw and then the Craig AccuCut. That thing works and I think it's good for like quick jobs, but for something where I know I need precise, accurate, repeatable cuts, this has been more than enough. So anyways, those are some of the tools that we've been using and uh, yeah, let's actually get to work here. To day eight of our bookshelf build. You can see here we've uh, applied a few uh, strokes of polyurethane just on this section. Looking really good. Uh, I didn't say this last time, um, but we did make a mistake. I don't really know if I would call it a mistake. It just was a choice and we decided to change it. What I did was on most of these shelves here, you might be able to tell there's a difference. I did the pocket holes this, like the top side up, and my thought was, I'm gonna cover it with wood putty, we're gonna stain it a darker color, it's it's gonna blend fine, you're gonna put books over it, it's not gonna be a problem. And that makes it easier for me, easy for me to install. Instead of like installing underneath, I'm just installing on top. That makes sense. Um, we were testing some stuff, and they, they really wanted something a lot lighter, a little bit closer to this. Well, that's, based on the wood filler that I used, it, was not gonna work at all. And we decided to go with a warm satin polyurethane, which gives it kind of a nice golden tone. And it just, you were gonna be able to tell that that wood filler was there. And the alternative was digging all of that out and then putting in, you know, those little pocket plugs. I hate working with those. And by the time I would have went to Lowe's to buy all of that stuff and come back and dug all that stuff out, I would have probably already had half of these flipped. So I spent about three hours last Thursday, which was day six, flipping everyone that you can see. The ones that you can't see, like these and these, they're still on top because you can see the bottom. So I think it looks better. I'm happier with it. Would it have been a better decision up front to have put these underneath? Probably knowing where we are now, if we were if we would have gone with a darker stain color, I think it would have worked because I did test it and it did blend well. But hindsight's 2020 and that's okay. They're happy, I'm happy, I think it looks really good. So today is gonna be a really boring portion of the video because we're just gonna we're gonna poly this whole thing. Every bit of this. I don't even think I have enough room on my SD card to film it. Would you look at that? This whole wall is complete. I spent the rest of yesterday, I did all of the poly, got all of that installed. I spent 11 hours here yesterday and I, I, I didn't work nonstop. I took a couple of breaks, but I didn't go anywhere. I didn't take a lunch break or anything like that. So I went hard all day long. I got all of the poly done and that took like three hours. And then I did that. And then I also went ahead and cut half of what I'm gonna need for this wall right here. For this section, we've got one, two, and three. And then we'll have this section right here. And basically it's gonna mimic uh, this corner and then um, those two sections. So section one, section two, section five, and six. Went ahead and got, there are 15 shelves right here. There's one vertical slot and then three more in the kitchen. And then I got it all sanded down. Yeah, they're ready to, well, I've got to do the pocket holes now and then we can, we can throw them up here. Super, super excited. 
this is my final board. Just cut it, just hit the pocket holes, and it's going right there, and I think we're done. Well, we're done with the actual the construction of it all. There's still trim, I still gotta do some poly on this side, possibly maybe to replace a couple of spots. We'll get to that. So, feast your eyes. Done. And it don't look too bad. Well, that's it you guys. The shelves are finally complete. Jess is touching up the window. We decided to paint it blue. They wanted it painted blue. I think it works really well. Um, all three walls are finally complete. One thing that I did not touch on was the trim. I didn't film that. We ended up just putting a little bit of quarter round, just a natural wood finish on the bottom top. I, I can't remember the name of it, but basically it's not. it's nothing fancy. It's maybe a quarter inch in thickness, and then kind of the same thing with that block at the top as well. And so I basically just did that all the way around. And yeah, we really like it. Painting looks really good. And then we've got our main shelf over the window, and then the window's painted blue. Jess, you're doing a great job. Thank you, I just, just had a few. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Definitely hit that like and subscribe button if you are interested in seeing more content like this in the future, and we'll see you in the next video.